They go into a pick and roll with the highest frequency in the league. Nick Fazikas operates almost like Nikola Jokic for the Denver Nuggets. Wow, Andrew Bogut said that. Mm, yeah, 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 this podcast. You know, once you get to playoffs, you know, whatever you've done throughout the season, it doesn't matter anymore. Like, that's all out the window. It's a new season. Like, playoffs is its own season. Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Meet B-League. It's your host, Chris Sasaki, the official B-League analyst. And here comes the postseason. Are you ready, guys? We are down to the wire. The long and hard-fought regular season is coming to an end. And the eight teams advancing to the postseason championships have been decided. Two former champions from the Eastern Conference, the Chiba Jets, who had a streak of 24 wins, a new B-League record this season, in Arvark, Tokyo, with their hard-nosed defense. Two teams from the Central Conference are the Kawasaki Brave Thunders, winning the conference for the third time. And also Yokohama B Corsairs making their way to a postseason appearance for the first time in their franchise history. Moving out west, the only conference with the top team undecided is the Western Conference. Would it be Ryukyu for the six consecutive seasons? Or would it be Shimane for the first time in their franchise history? Also, both teams chasing the top seeds in the west, Hiroshima and Nagoya Diamond Dolphins, have a winning record close to 700 and cannot be underestimated. In fact, if the championship starts now, there will be six teams out of eight teams that have a winning percentage around 700. On this brand new episode, I'm going to give you analysis on three contenders from each conferences. Okay, let's jump right in. All right, the first team I want to talk about is the Chiba Jets. In talking about the Chiba Jets, the number one focus will be on the pick and rolls when they play offense. They go into a pick and roll with the highest frequency in the league. 40.4% of their offense is from a pick and roll or a direct pass out of the pick and roll. And it all starts with their point guard, Yuki Togashi. Let's take a look how Yuki utilizes a transition pick and roll. He brings it up, a drag screen right away, pulls up, Bang! It looks very simple, nice and easy, right? But let's rewind it one more time. What makes Yuki so special is his ability to pull up from the dribble straight into his three-point shot. He crosses the line with lots of force, flows right into this drag screen right here. His defender makes a big mistake trying to go under and also the big that's guarding Gavin right here doesn't come out to the line of the screen which means he's in a drop coverage that gives Yuki huge space to pull up at the three-point line and watch his deceleration and his footwork his upper body goes straight up right over the big and kaboom when we talk about Yuki Togashi the main topic seems to be how fast he is and how he blows by defenders. But please, when you watch his game, if you have a chance, focus on how he stops on a dime and pops the three-point shot. In my eyes, his ability to pull up straight out of the pick and roll, he is the number one drop coverage buster in the B-League. Nice and simple, but not a lot of guards can actually do this. Okay, let's look at another play. Once again, Yuki Togashi handling the ball. The defense was in hard show. Two defenders comes, but he pulls out the bigger defender and swishes the net. Right here again, he's controlling the ball. Having no pressure up against him is a big no-no. And there's a screen. He's able to read the defense very well. Right here, Sendai chooses to send two defense almost in a blitzing type action. But Yuki doesn't panic. He's very calm 
he understands that this big, if he stretches him out enough, he could get a speed mismatch. He waits till number six, Go catches Gavin. Number two, Kotera is on an island trying to guard Yuki Togashi. This is a switch attacking scheme. Yuki shows he's gonna accelerate. Kotera kind of braces himself for the drive, but Yuki pulls up for the three. And the hand is down, so this is just enough space for Yuki Togashi. This is an isolation situation straight out of the pick and roll against a slower big. In the B League, having a point guard or a ball handler that can attack the switch is paramount. This is something you need to look for in the championship rounds. Let's focus on the bigs that are set in your screen. There are legit pick and pop options. This is Gavin Edwards shooting the three-pointer. And also from time to time, John Mooney would shoot the three-pointer out of a pick and pop. And also Vic Lowe is a great pick and pop option as well. Let's go into the action. Side out of bounds, Yuki catches the ball, shakes the defense towards his right side. Gavin sets a screen above the three-point line. They don't want to give Yuki Togashi a direct line to drive. They show two defense. This is a nightmare situation. They want to stop Togashi, but there's huge space for Gavin to just pick and pop. If the defense over here commits, it would have been a straight dump down over here, or if he stays on the corner, there would have been a corner three-pointer. Gavin sees that the defense doesn't want to fully commit and knocks down the three. And also, if you look underneath the basket, it's a two-on-one situation. Even if the ball bounces off the rim, it would have been a high percentage opportunity to rebound and get a second chance. So this pick and pop actually unlocks a lot of variations of plays that makes Chiba Jets even more dynamic. And they can switch the screeners from time to time. In our next play, Yuki trusts his teammate and keeps moving the ball. The next pick and roll is at the side. Christopher has a great shot but misses it and Gavin follows with a put-back dunk. Again, Yuki brings up the ball, but this season he has lots of faith in his teammates. He doesn't force the issue and uses the first screen, but once he sees that the paint is packed and there's no clear advantage in the middle, he just passes it forward to Christopher. Christopher passes it to the side. There are a few options right here. Christopher passes to Vic, he elects to set a screen. Now here comes the read. Vic could use the screen and choose to drive middle, but again, Ibaraki is packing the paint and sees that the defense is almost willing to switch. That's when Christopher sees that there's a slip opportunity. Christopher doesn't actually hit on the screen, he slips it. Vic notices it right away giving him a lane to the basket. The very last defender jumps to block the shot, giving Gavin a straight line to put it back. I said Chiba is the number one team playing the pick and roll game in the B League this season. But this doesn't happen accidentally or just having one superstar like Yuki Togashi. There's also Harashuta that can handle the ball in pick and roll situation, Nishimura, their backup point guard, and also Christopher and Vic Lowe. There are multiple personnel that can actually handle the pick and roll and create advantages for the team. This making them the most dynamic pick and roll team. Also, some of you may have noticed, every time there's a pick and roll situation, there's also an offensive rebound opportunity. And now we move on to the top seed of the Central Conference, Kawasaki Brave Thunders. And when we talk about Kawasaki, we must talk about Nick Fazikis. He is averaging 21 points per game this season. But my focus is on his passing. Kawasaki assists 75.5% of their field goals and Nick Fazikis plays as a point center. So let's break it down. Kawasaki runs a pick and roll on the side. The other team switches. Nick detects that right away, skips the pass to the corner. Bang, bang, three-point shot. 
I know that was just a blink of an eye, so let's run that back. Right here, Yuma Fuji is controlling the ball. He uses a step up screen on the side, driving the ball towards the sideline. Now Niigata switches this ball screen, and that makes a mismatch with Jordan Heath. When Jordan dives, Niigata is in panic mode. Jordan dives, Nick sees that there's no space for him to dive, but also he sees this defender is trying to help out the smaller point guard trying to guard Jordan, which means Nomi in the opposite corner is wide open. Nick catches the ball, but reading the floor perfectly, this is just a touch pass over the head, right away swing to the corner, wide open jump shot, high percentage corner three-pointer. If you are familiar with the NBA, Nick Fazikas operates almost like Nikola Jokic for the Denver Nuggets. He is the point center for the team, and he is the backbone of the high assist rate. If they have good cutters or good spot up situation, Nick will be the hub passing it and swinging it all over the court. And also, if it's very, very necessary, he will just drive right and shoot his patent floater with his right hand for an and one. So in the championship, please watch Nick Fazikas and how he dominates the game. Right here, after a missed shot, Kawasaki rebounds, but doesn't give the ball to a point guard, but Nick Fazikas in the middle. He throws a lob pass right to Jordan on point, layup. Nick is averaging 4.5 assists this season, a career high. Other teams are kind of falling asleep because they don't feel this is a threat, but it's actually very deadly. Jordan is a very good sprinter. He beats his man right here. Once he gets shoulder to shoulder, Nick understands if he throws the ball right into this space, nobody can stop Jordan. And the last play is a patent, almost quarterback-like touchdown pass. This was a little shorter pass than what Nick usually throws, but it's still amazing play. This is after a made basket, guys. All the defense is trying to apply high pressure, but Nick picks up the ball. He sees Jordan in front of his defender. Nick has a very, very efficient radar inside his brain. He understands everything that's happening on the court. As he picked up the ball, he detects there's an opportunity for a touchdown. Nick has very soft hands and he has a good arm. I talked to him once, he said he used to play American football when he grew up and he built his skill playing different sports. So guys, if you're just starting to play basketball, play baseball, soccer, football, whatever you like, it might end up being one of your strengths in the professional level. All right, moving out west, let's talk about Shimane Susanoo Magic. When we talk about the Susanoo Magic, we need to talk about Pelin Buford and Seiya Ando. These two are the playmakers, the main go-to guys for the Susanoo. When you look at the numbers, these two are actually operating more than 80%, 80% of the team's pick and roll. So let's check that out. All right, this is the first play. Buford is controlling the ball at the top, uses a ball screen, pushes cross, nice high glass finish with his left hand. Right here in the middle, controlling the ball. It's only a five point game, it's crunch time. Buford is a great isolation player and a pick and roll player. He gives a little nudge right here, so he gets a little bit deeper and closer to the three point line. This is a very important tactic, so when he uses a screen, and if the defense stays low, he's in three point range. But right here, defense is in drop, but it's almost like a high flat. He doesn't go over the three-point line, but still doesn't want to give Buford a three-pointer. 
So when he sees that from his right hand to his left, he uses a push cross. This is not a regular crossover. You can see that his right shoulder is protecting the ball and also giving him more momentum leaning towards the basket. And after the dribble with the second step, he's beaten the big right here. He cradles the ball with his left hand. This is a very good tactic. See that this guy is trying to give a little more help on defense. If he doesn't cradle the ball, even with the slightest deflection from the defense, the ball might get loose. Once he jumps off, using his body to shield off the defense. But look at the soft release, using the board right above the block, nice and easy, with his weak hand. Amazing skill, amazing attacking ability. And in this play, Buford is the one bringing the ball up, but Shimane has a luxury of a second ball handler that also can be the main option. Now it's Seiya's turn. There's a pick and pop and a give back and chase action. He pulls up from three, bang, three point. As I said, B Ford and Seiya are the guys that run the pick and rolls for Shimane 80% of the time. You see Nick K pointing finger to Taniguchi to set a screen for Seiya so he can come meet the ball. He gets the ball, there's a handoff action. If he would have had a shot, he would have taken it. But right after that, with lots of space, Taniguchi sprints up for another ball screen action. Seiya sees that the defense is icing the pick and roll. What I mean by that is the defense is taking away middle on the ball and also the center that's guarding the big is dropping back here, funneling Seiya to the side. Pick and pop action is a great counter for this. There's a longer closeout for the defense. Taniguchi decides to give it right back to Seiya. Now, this guy was in multiple handoff, ball screen action. He is a split second late. And Seiya sees that, hits him with a behind the back. One dribble, more space, pop. Tough contest, but still, Seiya. No mercy with the three-pointer. Before being an amazing pick and roll player and Seiya being an amazing pick and roll player, what do a lot of teams do? Sometimes they show two defense on the ball. But don't underestimate Nick K's ability to be the glue guy. He assisted the corner three-pointer. Once Buford and Seiya goes on a roll, a lot of teams will switch or even blitz the ball screen. This is more of a soft double team, but there's two on the ball. Nick K, it's a touch pass, and Shirahama knocking down the three-point shot. Nick K has been the glue guy throughout the season. His pick and pop ability or the handoff actions that he does from side to side is very vital for Shimane's offense. But at the same time, as you see in the last shot, Shirahama was able to knock down that corner three, but a lot of teams will send multiple defense to B Ford or Seiya or even Nick K. So for Shimane to advance to the finals, it is vital for the role players to step up, knock down these corner three point shots. And also, some teams will use the switching defense, forcing or even giving Buford opportunities to go one-on-one. -on -one. Once he goes one-on-one, -on -one, he may have to shoot 30 field goals per game. How many he makes will be the deciding factor in the championships. All right, I hope you enjoyed that film study as much as I did, but there's one more team I would like to talk to you about. That's the Yokohama B Corsairs. Yokohama, they are a great defensive team who protects the paint very well and likes to run out in transition after defense. In fact, they have the second most transition fast breaking points, 14.6 points per game. Yuki Kawamura, the young and upcoming superstar, is definitely the guard who pushes the pace. But Jackson and Oliver are also special players in transition. 
making them a more dynamic, fast-breaking team. Also, we shouldn't forget about the second unit they have, led by Kenta Mori. The point guard has an assist to turnover rate of 4.9, making him one of the best backup point guards in this league. His solid contribution is key to the team, as they go with a two guard lineup from time to time with Kamura and Kenta Mori. I encourage anyone who hasn't seen them play yet, go watch them. They won't disappoint. All right, let's change our focus to the B2 competition. The second division teams finish their 60 game regular season ahead of the B1. Here's the bracket for the postseason playoffs to decide the two teams moving up and playing in the B1 division next season. And for our interview in this episode, we featured a guard from Nagasaki Veruka, Jordan Heading. So for this episode of Meet B League, we have Jordan Heading from the Nagasaki Velka. Thank you so much for taking your time. Hey, thanks for having us. I know um, the regular season has finished and postseason is upon us. It's exciting time of the season, isn't it? Yeah, I mean it's it's what we work all year for. Um, so it's you know it's, it's all about winning at this time of year. Of course, it is all the time, but uh, this is when it's it's you know really important. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to look back to the regular season first. You guys finished um, 43 and 13, uh, second in the Western Conference. How would you evaluate the totality of the regular season? Yeah, I thought we had a pretty good year. Um, you know, we battled injuries a lot. You know, we had countless amounts of games. We, you know, one of our one or two of our imports were out. A lot of different guys have stepped up in different ways throughout the year, and I think uh, all of those lessons that we learned, I think it's all going to serve us really well in the playoffs. Um, you know, we're, we're confident, you know, whoever we match up against, you know, we're confident that, that we'll be able to get the job done. Yeah, I think, you know, with as long as the season is, we've been really been able to hone in on our chemistry and um, really figure out what works for us. Um, and hopefully we can play winning basketball. You played in like Taiwan, but you chose Japan to play this season. Um, just looking back to making that decision, what what was the main thing that you wanted to do in the B League? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the B League just has such a, a really great vision for the future. Um, um, and yeah, I mean, I, I talked to a lot of the, my Filipino friends over here that are playing um, in B1 and stuff, and, and they all had great things to say about it. So I just. I really wanted to be a part of it. It was always sort of the dream of, of mine to uh, to be able to be a, an Asian import in, in the B League. So um, yeah, it was, it was really like a no-brainer to me um, to, to come over. Yeah. Cool, cool. Who who are the guys that you talked to? No, I talked a lot to, to the Ravenna Bros, uh, Ray, Dwight. Um, yeah, I mean, just kind of the guys that were here last year that um, were even 30, you know, been here a couple of years uh, before this year. Um, and just kind of asking them about, you know, how how professional it was out here and um, just the way that teams take care of you, um, you know, outside of financials and things like that. Um, and that was something that was really important to me is just to find a really professional environment and, and a place where I can um, really improved my craft and, and it was a really good decision in terms of that. Yeah. Uh, would you say like the B-League is becoming more of more and more like the center of attraction from players not just from the Philippines but also people from overseas to play? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, guys I played with in college back in the States, you know, they're asking me like, oh, can you get me on a team out there in Japan? And, you know, I think there's a lot of buzz, you know, not only in Asia, but I think around the world, you know, guys are looking at it from Europe and Americans always trying to get over here as well and um, it's becoming you know for me as, a, as an Australian as well there's a lot more Australians coming over uh, from the NBL yeah I mean I heard it on Andrew Berger's podcast he was saying that uh, the NBL is a little bit worried because um, uh, yeah they're seeing more guys leave the NBL to come over to the B League as well because the money's better and um, so yeah I mean I think the B League just the trajectory that it's on I think uh, it's exciting for athletes involved. Wow, Andrew Bogut said that. Mm, yeah, 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 in his podcast. So, oh, yeah. Wow. 
Oh, I gotta check that out. That's a <laughs> huge compliment from somebody that knows like the highest level. Right, right, yeah, yeah, for sure. You gave lots of good compliments about the B League, but what what was the hardest thing to adjust for you this season? Um, probably the travel. Um, I think the, the travel on top of the back to back schedule every weekend, I think was、mm. uh was pretty tough on my body. Um, you know, from Taiwan last year, I think the The biggest travel day that you had on the island was probably a two-hour ride. So you were, you know, you were back home every, you know, the night of the game, and and you only played back-to-backs on home games. So、um, the schedule was a lot easier.、Um, I never had to take multiple flights or anything like that、uh, to to go play, you know, back-to-back. So that stuff was was kind of was kind of challenging as well as you know living like at least an hour away from the airport here. Um, so yeah, like full travel days before you play back to back. I think that was something that I didn't expect、um, to be pretty challenging. But、um, you know, it's it's all part of the grind.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, I want to talk about、um, Nagasaki a little bit more.、Um, the team itself has high aspiration to get to the B1 level as quick as they can. Is there a certain pressure that comes with、um, playing in Nagasaki? Um, I mean, I as soon as we got here, that was the conversation. That's what we're. We're aiming to do this year. I mean, like before we started practice, you know, the very beginning of preseason. I mean, like this is our goal. We wanna, we wanna move up to B1, and、uh, we wanna win this, this B2 championship. And、um, everybody knew that that was the goal. So I think、uh, there's not really, there's, I mean, there's not really any pressure that people weren't expecting. You played in 56 games,、um, second highest scorer on the team,、um, 2.8 rebounds, and second highest assist. Um, you were throwing dimes, the second highest as well. When I first knew about you,、um, I thought you as a shooter, but you had lots of ball handling、uh, duties as well, and you had, you actually had the second highest pain points throughout the season. How how would you evaluate your own performance throughout this season? Yeah, I think、uh, I think it was alright.、Um, I definitely think I could have shot the ball better. Um, mm-hmm. But I think、uh, as time went on, you know, I found you know different ways to complement my scoring, not just from the three point line.、Um, so I think I was able to sort of develop different areas of my game that way, which,、uh, uh, which which was nice. And you know, almost every day I'm working on individual practices with you know Jawad Williams, who's playing in the NBA, and he's always got you know amazing、um, you know advice for me. Is I've trusted the coaches to be able to play in a lot of on balls as well, and a lot of handoff situations. I enjoy、um, being able to get downhill and,、um, and and try and make plays that way, as, as well as you know playing outside the arc as well. Let's、um, move into talking about the playoffs. How is it like the influence of the vets, like Jeff Gibbs or like even Pablo? They they know the B one level, right? And、mm. their their experience should be huge in the postseason. But what are the things that you guys talk about going into the playoffs? Yeah, I mean,、uh, lately the you know、uh, we we, have, we don't have too many guys with playoff experience、um, on our team. So so our coach has been having you know guys like Pablo and Jeff. Um, you know, before a film session, just kind of talk about their experience in the playoffs, and you know, once you get to playoffs, you know, whatever you've done throughout the season, it doesn't matter anymore. Like that's all out the window. It's a new season. Like playoffs is its own season. So yeah, just being able to rely on, on, on the wisdom of the veterans is, is is always a good thing. They they see the game in, in different ways. I mean, the reason why I guess what, I didn't even know about what you said about me being the second most paint scorers on the team or whatever. That's because of Jeff and Pablo's, you know, passes because it's all—it's just ridiculous back backdoor cuts. I didn't even know I was open, but the ball falls, you know, just falls in my lap. It's an easy layup. So, yeah, it's always fun playing with guys that just know the game and can see it. We've played at a high level for a long time. It just makes it easy on the rest of us. That's a very good position to be in if you just layups just happen like that. Oh yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Cool, cool, cool. And the first round, you guys are going against.、Uh, Kumamoto,、uh, same team in Kyushu. I won't go into detail game plans, but what are the things that you guys got to take care of going against Kumamoto? You know they've got some really, really good imports.、Um, you know they got Ben Lawson, who's, a, who's an athletic seven footer who can protect the rim with the best of them.、Um, so that's that's always something that you got to adjust.、Um, yeah, and, and just、uh, it's always about competing and speeding the game up and.、Uh, Trying to find ways in which we can, you know, get a get a foot up on them. 
And to wrap this interview up, could you kind of like give a shout out to your fans and、um, just hype it up for like the playoffs? Yeah, I mean,、uh, thank you so much for everyone, you know, supporting all the Nagasaki Delta fans, all the g i l a s Filipinas fans that are, you know, tuning in、um, and, you know,、uh, keeping an eye out for the, for the playoffs.、Um, you know, appreciate all of your support and all of your love, and、uh, I'm going to go try and get this thing done. Once again, I would like to thank Jordan for sitting down and taking this time with me. And let's all look forward to who becomes victorious in the B2 division, clinching their position in the B1 league. The B2 playoffs start May 5th, so stay tuned. And don't forget, the lowest ranked teams in the B1 are fighting for their lives. Two teams will be relegated after this season to the B2 division. Kiefer's team Lakes are on the edge of relegation. Let's see how they rally at the end. Once the regular season finishes, the B1 will go right into the championship tournament from the next weekend. We will be live streaming on Facebook and also on our official YouTube channel, so please join us with the live action. All right, that's a wrap, and thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you keep it locked with all the postseason B League actions. Our next episode will be shortly after a new champion is crowned. Till then, peace out.